Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to this new episode of Women Around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Today we will attempt to talk about two of our mothers, two great women whom the Prophet lived with and impacted their lives profoundly. The first wife of the Prophet is Juwayriyah bint al Harith, Ibn Abi Dirar, Ibn al Mustaliq, from the great tribe of Khuza'a. Juwayriyah was not her original name. As Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, said that. Her real name was Barra, and Barra meant pious or righteous. And it was a habit that the Prophet ﷺ would change most names that had self-praise to them. And he used to not like people saying, he left righteous or pious when he leaves the house. Instead of saying he left Hind or he left Fatima, which is a normal name. Because it insinuates that he has left righteousness and piety. And this is why scholars say that it is not recommended to call or to name your daughter as Tuqa or Iman. So that when someone calls and says, is Iman there? And he says, no, there is no Iman. Meaning that it's a double edge, uh, a sword that can mean the person is not there, but also it can mean that there is no Iman. There is no Tuqa. There is nothing as such. So the Prophet ﷺ used to change names, bad names into good names, names that imply praising one's self into normal names. So for example, he changed the name of Hazan. One of the companions' name was Hazan, which means difficult. And he said, no, your name is Sahl, easy. So he used to change such names, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, we don't have a lot about the wives of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the books of Seerah only highlights what was important, what had an impact on the life of that mother of the believer, or generally on Sira itself and the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and the lessons that can be learned from it. So what's the story with Juwayriya? Juwayriya was the daughter of Al-Harith ibn Abi Dirar and Bani al They were a tribe that assisted the idol worshippers being themselves idol worshippers, they assisted the people of Quraysh in their battles, such as the battle of Uhud, and they kept on intimidating the Muslims and expressing hostility towards Islam. So when the Prophet heard, alayhi salatu wasalam, that they were preparing their armies to attack the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ had to take a preemptive measure. And he went with the Muslims to attack them. And they took them by surprise, being the enemies of Islam, an open enemy. And there was a fight where men were killed, others fled, while the women and the children were taken as slaves and captive, 
captives of war. So Juwayriya bint al-Harith was given as part of the booty of war, the spoils of war, to one of the warriors. And he was Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas. May Allah be pleased with him. And Thabit himself has a history with the Prophet because he was the orator. He was the spokesman of the Prophet Whenever tribes came and they met face to face, they would appoint someone to give a speech praising his tribe and their achievements. So he's known as the Khatib. So the Prophet ﷺ had Thabit as his spokesman due to his loud voice and due to his fluency and beautiful language. So she was appointed and given to him. Being who she was, a woman of great honor and social status, the daughter of a tribe's leader. So, so she was a princess and not a common woman. She could not live with the thought of being a slave. In Islam, there's an option for slavery. They can buy themselves out. A slave can go to his master and say, listen, I would like to buy myself out. How much would you like? And the guy would say, if I were to display you for sale, I would get maybe a thousand dollars. So a thousand dollars is good for me. So the slave goes and work, depending on his expertise and knowledge, and gains the money and gives it to his master and he's free to go. So she went to Thabit ibn Qais and she asked him for such a transaction and he agreed. But she was penniless. She had nothing, no money, no wealth. And her father fled and all the men in her tribe ran away with their lives. So she thought that the only alternative is to ask people to assist her. By that time, she had already accepted Islam. And this is logical and normal. Most people have resentment to Islam due to what they see in the media. And you can't blame them. The media brainwashes them. If they don't put some effort to research and read objectively on their own, they are like the rest of the herd. If the herd leader goes left, they all go left. Even if it's a cliff that they're going to fall off. They just follow the herd leader. So those who liberate themselves from the effect of unbiased, or bias, media, and research it, would find the truth. Juwaira was one of them. Yes, she was taken as a prisoner of war. Yes, she was enslaved. But when she saw Islam, and she realized that all what she was hearing from her father, from the other tribesmen about Islam was false, she accepted it. So she went to the Prophet ﷺ to seek his financial assistance. Mother Aisha narrates the hadith and she says that when she came seeking permission to speak with the Prophet ﷺ, the moment I set eyes on her, I hated it. This is what Mother Aisha is saying. She says she was beautiful, charming, and cute. Any man would set eyes on her 
would be captivated by her beauty. So she said, I did not like this. I hated it. She's a woman. She knows. So when she talked to the Prophet, ﷺ, she said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, my name is Juwayriya bint al-Harith ibn Abi Dirar, the head of his tribe and their leader. And you have seen what had happened to me. And I was given to Thabit ibn Qais. So I bought myself from him and he agreed. So now I am here to seek your assistance in paying off my debt. So the Prophet ﷺ gave her a choice. So he said to her, would you like something that is better? Meaning that I can give you money to set yourself free. But would you like me to give you something which is a, an offer you cannot refuse? She said, what would that be, O Prophet of Allah? And the Prophet said, I'll pay off your debt and I'll marry you. Now, being who she was, the daughter of the leader of her tribe, the princess, and being the one proposing to her is the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the strongest man in Arabia, a messenger, a prophet from Allah. Who can come close to him? No one. So she immediately on the spot accepted this offer that no one can refuse. And she says, of course, O Prophet of Allah, I would take this offer. So the Prophet said, I have done that. Meaning that I've paid your dues and I married you. And the news came out to the people, to the companions, that the Prophet والسلام, married Juwayriya bint al Harith. So the people who were with the Prophet والسلام, who had prisoners of war under their control which was money, they said, how is it possible that the Prophet's in-laws are enslaved with us? This is not befitting. We set all the captives under our control free for the sake of Allah, and after that, for the sake of the Prophet's new wife. Imagine how many people were set free the narration says, by setting Juwairiyas free and marrying her, she was the most influential, she was the most favorable, or she had the favor and the blessing over her tribe. No woman could have done this to her own people. She got a hundred household hundred families all freed and set free from slavery because of her marriage to the Prophet ﷺ. What more blessing can there be? Now, people who do not have Iman, who do not believe, they would criticize and say, oh, the Prophet married her because she was beautiful and charming. As if it is an insult. When you as a human being want to eat something, would you eat trash or would you eat a beautiful and tasty meal? Would anyone condemn you if you were to drink something that is sweet and cold? instead of taking something that is bitter or bad? Is the Prophet ﷺ a human being or not? He is a human being, and he likes to eat, to drink, and he likes women. He himself told us about himself, that from your world, Allah made beautiful to me women 
and perfumes. He loves to smell good things. So, only the idol worshippers criticized the messengers of Allah long ago that they eat food and they walk in the markets. They're normal human beings. And this is insane. No one said that the prophets are not human beings. They are human beings. And the more they have this urge to natural things, the more perfect they are. It is totally wrong to think that being celibate is something positive or something natural. This is not natural. What is natural is what Allah has put in us, this attraction to the opposite gender, so that we can get married and we can reproduce. So the Prophet ﷺ was a perfect man with desires. But when you compare him to others, you will see that the difference between the heavens and the earth. He was extremely strong as a man. Yet he was satisfied with a woman 15 years older than him from the age of 25 until the age of 50. Never ever had a second wife or anything of the sort. And then he married someone his age who was in her 50s. It was Sauda bin Zama. May Allah be pleased with her. And he stayed with her for three more years. We know that the companions used to talk and say that the Prophet ﷺ was given the power of 30 men. He's not like us. He's so strong, especially when it comes to issues of intimacy. He's the perfect man. Yet, with all his fasting, with all his night prayer, with all his obligations, which would normally wreck a normal person, the Prophet had the power of 30 men. So it is not shameful. It is not something that is bad to seek what is halal through marriage. And look at the consequence of such a choice. The Prophet would not let someone who's like Juwayriya, who is a princess, to be given as a concubine to one of the companions. She would not be happy in her life. Her master would not be happy with her. And she may cause problems and trouble to him. She must be given to someone her equal or more superior so that she would be satisfied and fulfilled. And this is what happened when the Prophet married her, alayhi salatu salam, and her barakah and her blessing of such a marriage was cascaded to all of her people who were set free and they were all freed. How old was she? She was 20 years of age when the Prophet married her, alayhi salatu wasalam. How long did she live with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Not more than six years. And the Prophet died afterwards. And this is also important to pay attention to. Nowadays, girls and women fail to weigh things properly. And their parents as well. So if a person proposes to a girl, they look at the age difference. And they say, no, 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 he's too old for her. Why? Because he's 10 years older or 15 years older. What's wrong in that? So, no, this is a big gap. They sh it should be like three or four years difference. This is not realistic. A man at the moment graduates when he's 23 or 24 years from college. Then he joins the private sector or the workforce. He needs like three, four more years to collect money in order to open a house and get married. So by the time he's 28 years of age, which is the average, he will not look for someone who's 28 years of age or even 25 years of age. He would look for someone who's 17 or 16 or maximum 
18. And if women and girls continue to refuse, they'll grow older and older and the proposals will get less and less. The demand is far less than the supply. For every man, there are like 15 or 20 women candidates. So she cannot pick and choose. He can pick and choose. I know a friend who's over 60 years of age, healthy, mashallah, and capable of getting married. He's trying to get married to anyone that accepts him. We propose to women in their 40s. Imagine. And she says, no, 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 he's too old for, that, for me. He's not a patient that you will take care of. He is a healthy man. But still, these misconceptions ruin our lives. They hinder women from living their lives. What's wrong if you marry someone 60 or 65 years of age who's still fit, incapable of earning, and all what you need is a husband? You're not going to be his nurse. What's wrong in that? The Prophet married her والسلام, when he was 57 years of age. And she was 20 years of age. And she lived these six years with utmost happiness. Women don't think like this. And they keep on postponing and delaying until it is too late for them. So, Juwairiyah made the right choice. A choice of a lifetime. She became the mother of the believers. And she loved the Prophet والسلام, like all of his wives. Her father, Al Harith, came to the Prophet والسلام, after a while, after the marriage was done. So he said to him in a truce where he came and said, O Prophet of Allah, Juwairi is my daughter and I am an honorable man. My daughter cannot fall into slavery. So ask whatever you want and I'll give it to you. If you want a hundred camels, which is a real big fortune, I'll give it to you. So the Prophet said to him, how about I'll give you a better proposal? Keep your money and I'll give her the choice. If she chooses you, so be it. But if she chooses to stay with me, then you will honor that. And her father said, Wallah, you, you leave me no other choice than this beautiful and fair and just choice. So he goes to his daughter and he says to his daughter in a doubtful manner because he senses something fishy. And he says to her, Juwairiya, do not disgrace us, your family and tribe. The man has given you the choice. So what do you choose? Without any hesitation, she said, I choose the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And her father said, by Allah, you've disgraced us. You choose this new man who killed your people, enslaved your families, and took you as a prisoner of war, as a slave woman, over me, your father? Of course, that would be the logical choice. Where would you find someone like the Prophet ﷺ to serve, let alone to get married to? So she made the right decision and she was one of the righteous practicing wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Ibn Muslim in the Sahih narrated that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said that Juwayra told him that once the Prophet ﷺ left her house 
to go and pray Fajr prayer. And she was in the place of her worship where she prays her night prayer and Fajr, etc. So the Prophet went and came back like an hour and a half later when it was morning. And she was still where she was. So the Prophet asked her, are you still in the same position I left you? She said, yes, meaning a whole hour and a half. So she said, yes. So the Prophet said, alayhi salatu I said four words, four sentences that if they were to be weighed with all what you had said today, meaning this hour and a half, it would overweigh them. I said these four phrases three times. What were they? The Prophet said, Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Adada khalqih, as many as creations Allah has. Warida nafsih, as much as Allah is satisfied with. Wazina ta'arshih, as heavy as the throne is. Wamidada kalimatih, as much as the ink which Allah's words and commands are written by. So the Prophet والسلام, acknowledged her ibadah, her devotion to worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, and he directed her to what is the best. Bukhari reported in his Sahih that the Prophet والسلام, came into Juwayriya's house on a Friday while she was fasting. So the Prophet asked her, did you fast yesterday? She said, no. Are you going to fast tomorrow? She said, no. The Prophet said to her, then break your fast, meaning that it is not permissible to isolate Friday with fasting unless you fast a day before and a day after. This was Juwayriyah, Bintul Harith, a beautiful name. Rarely you will find people calling their, wife, their uh, daughters Juwayriyah. One of my daughter's names is Juwayriyah. And I remember going to a hospital once. And the receptionist was taking the information. So he says, what's the patient name? I said, Juwayria. And she said, Ju what? I said, Juwayria. And she's a Muslim. She said, why? What did she do wrong? You call her this name. <laughs> I said, subhanallah. The mother of the believer, your mother, and you don't know her name? She said, I never heard this name before in my life. She's the wife of the prophet? Ali Sosam said, yes. She said, I know only of Khadija and Aisha. That's it. And subhanallah, about the ignorance we have. Juwayrah bint al-Harith, one of the mothers of the believers and one of the wives of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And unfortunately, we don't have time to speak about the second one so that we would, inshallah, talk about her later on. Hada wallahu a'lam. Wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين